Okay, well, welcome everybody. Here we go. I'm just one minute late. That's not too bad. Let me present my screen for you so that you can see where we're at. I can see where we're at. Let's see. And make sure it's not flash. Yeah, it's flashing. There we go. That stopped it. Okay, so a um, couple of quick questions. Uh, sorry, I've got to readjust this just a little bit. Okay, so I see in the chat line uh, one question about whether we're going to do more SketchUp or if you're done with it. Um, if you'll uh, look at the, uh, the calendar for the class, we do a week of SketchUp, a week of AutoCAD, and a week of Revit. And then you're into project work. And the projects are all set up so that they can be done on any three, uh, any of those three. So after uh, next week, which is Revit, you'll have your choice of which one to do. So you'll get a, you'll really be able to play with the one that is the um, most interest to you. So that's a good question. And hopefully that answers it. Let's take a look and see what we've got going on for today. I am recording the session right now. Uh, this is our what to do in week four of Design 320. Please note that February 12th is a holiday, so there's no instruction and no meets. And the same applies to Monday the 15th. Saturday and Sunday are uh, college open days, whatever that means now since the college is shut down. But um, um, we will not have any meets on the 12th nor on the 15th. So here we go. Let's take a look and see what we're going to be doing. We're going to do mass modeling again. And we're going to do a little bit of AutoCAD and a little bit of Inventor. So the Inventor, you may need to get onto VMware with. And um, it's the mechanical stuff, but literally, it is so fast. What I'm asking you to do is very, very basic and very, very quick. But I want to show you uh, the power of the import-export function. And I think in Inventor, and you can import and export in anything. You can, in AutoCAD, they call it insert block. In SketchUp, they call it insert 3D warehouse design. And Inventor, they have a whole range of things and you're um, importing components. So it doesn't really matter which one you do. But I think Inventor is so cool because then you can assign materials and really it brings in so much data when you bring it in so we'll look at that a little bit here's a little bit of a video that maybe you've watched and maybe you haven't but i'm not going to go over it now uh we do have a playlist set up so if you click on that you'll see everything that is in um uh, we got three things in the playlist now okay so Maybe some of you will want to get in and see those. But as you'll, as you'll find out now, I'm putting everything into a playlist. And if you sort it by probably date published, it will go in the order of what to do. And, huh, I put the milling machine intro into here. I put it in the wrong one. I'll go fix that. That, goes, that belongs in design 330 playlist shame on me um there's a google drive with stuff in it and there's some things and and this is really what you're going to make you're going to do your autocad primitives you're going to make four things one two three four Pretty, pretty straightforward because these two are made from combinations, Boolean functions of these. 
Boolean is a fancy way of saying add or subtract or intersect. So Boolean function, here I added them together. Here I subtracted them. So you're going to do a little bit of that. You're going to do a civil job, which is uh, a water tower. Okay, and so you can find out about water towers. I've done a lot of work with water towers in my career. And then here's a quick architectural one. Again, it's mass modeling. You're taking up the space. Notice there are no walls. There's no interior. There's no floor. There are two chunks. And the reason that you do mass modeling in this case would be to export this to an energy program, which could quickly and easily tell you about your energy use for this home based on the mass model. Okay, so it's not really meant to do much more than that. Okay, so those, I mean, that's what you're going to work with this week uh, okay and then we've got our submittal template to work with which let's take a look at that week four i'm starting to add what you're supposed to focus on okay so these are out of your student learning outcomes for this class what are you supposed to learn Sketch and conceptualize designs, quick sketching, concept solutions. That's what these types of things are doing. Um, so Lily asked, do you need to draw the house in all the ways because you put the roof on without keeping a separate one? What you did is fine, Lily. If you add them together in the end, that's perfectly fine. So that's a good question also. Um, so sketching, apply mass modeling software applications. That's AutoCAD Solids, Inventor Solids, Conceptual Architectural. And here's where I put in the Inventor Engineering Design Projects and based on divine programming guidelines. In other words, do you have dimensions you're supposed to hit? As before, you're going to fill out your schedule. Notice it says that the holiday. Uh, visualize your work. Do all of your good stuff that you've been doing before. Uh, at least four examples using rectangles, triangles, and cylinders, positive and negative spaces to create shape. Oh my gosh, that's almost exactly like what we had in SketchUp, but it says AutoCAD. I did change that from when I made my video. Um, import, add, and subtract different primitive shapes to make a single complex one. And so I'd like you to do the Harriet Tubman house. And so I'll, um, I'll ask you to work on that one i i've got an image of it to upload here's the water tower and here's a gear ratio and describe what a gear ratio is so i think i still have to give you this drawing to work on for the architectural one your primitives well actually i gave you one i might i might have to fix this up uh and then when we talk about material assignments you're going to use the gear that you made over here. It's just generic and it's a gear ratio and you make it. You're going to assign different materials and just take pictures. Okay. And I want you to look up. Why would you use brass or bronze gears? Why might you use steel gears? And these are not very common at all. When might you use aluminum gears? And you might find that they're very rarely used or you might find that there's a special use for them. Okay? And then, of course, into here. Make primitive shapes and subtract shapes. And uh, I'll get those set up for you. Okay, this one, I'm hoping it's very straightforward. Again, you can use VMware or... 
for your AutoCAD, which is what I'm going to do so that when I open it up, it looks like yours. Okay? So when I open up AutoCAD on here, it looks a little bit different than what I generally use because I do settings. And so I'll go through those with you. Okay. So um, that's the what to do this week. Let's see what I'm going to do today. Here's primitives. Okay. Starting AutoCAD, creating, move, copy, add, and subtract primitives. Looks like I put them all into one. Okay. And here's a video on them. This video. Okay. But I'm just going to do this for you. And again, I'm not going to do the specific sizes I've asked you to do, but I'm going to kind of do something like it. All right. So that you can see how it works. And I'll even maybe do the water tower for you. So here we go. We'll start AutoCAD. And you'll see that there are a few settings to make if you don't already have AutoCAD. Janice asks if I'm recording and I'm checking it right now. Yes, I am recording. So this will come up in a moment. I don't have my workspace and I don't have uh, all my stuff set up because I don't think I need it today. So when AutoCAD first comes up on VMware, it comes up in what we call out of the box situation. And I don't know too many people that work on it like this, but that's okay. We're going to work on it this way, but there's a few things. See how there's all these grid lines back here? Seems like I never end up with grid lines. So there's a little, looks like a waffle down here, a little tic-tac-toe. Turn them off and you've got a black background. And you'll notice that this toolbar doesn't look anything like the one that I set up in the in the thing because this is only for 2D and we're going to be working three dimensions. So I'm going to go down to this little gear, click the little arrow and say I want to do 3D modeling. It'll work in 3D basics too, but I'll get you used to the big dog set of stuff. Look at all this stuff. And today, this week, we're going to live in what they call primitive world. These are the primitives that you can make. And if you want to, you can really get in and do some cool stuff. But you can make boxes, cylinders, cones. Cones are really cool because not only can you do a cone. Let me look at this from the side. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to say cone cones like that if you click on it you can actually make it into a frustrum cone it's one that's been cut off isn't that cool looking i'll tell you there's a lot more power than sketchup but look at this interface and it is in many ways harder to work so um this is where you want to work we're going to work in these primitives. And so this little view cube up here, top view, and I look at it from this corner often. And so the first thing to do is make a box. And I think I gave you dimensions. But see how out of the box it's got those numbers. So just type in the corresponding number, 8. And then to get to the next number, you press the tab button. And I think I made it by, I don't remember, four. Enter, and then it says, how tall do you want it? I'm going to, I don't remember what it was. I'm going to make it three. So mine's eight by four by three, and there's a box. And if I want to look at my box kind of as a solid, I can look at it conceptual or hidden. This is sort of like SketchUp, sketchy edges. I, you know, all these x-ray. But I think I suggested looking at it as hidden. So that's the first thing that I can make. And now the next thing I can make is a cylinder. And so I see it's asking for the radius right now. See how it's kind of showing the radius? If I type D, enter, now it's doing the diameter. 
And so I'll make this one three. No, I'll make it I'll make it two enter and I'll make it point five tall. And and you've got numbers to do. Now here's the cool thing. I'm gonna save this really quick just in case I ruin something. I do that a lot. This is my primitive AutoCAD file. Now here's the really cool thing. See this button down here that looks like a square with another little square. These are called snaps and they work really well in AutoCAD. And there's tons I can I can pick an endpoint, a midpoint, a center point, a geometric. So I can pick tons of different things. But I'm going to want to work with centers and endpoints. So I want that little button to be highlighted. And so there's one item, two items. So now I'm going to make a copy. And the copy button is pretty quick. First of all, I can just type it, copy. Oh. Yeah, copy, and it comes up. And the, see how it's telling me? Select the objects. I'll copy this object. And I can copy more than one thing. So once I'm done copying, I just press Enter. And then it says, "What? where is your base point? So I'm going to take this little corner down here, and I'm going to put it somewhere. Click. And I can do that over and over and over again, however many times I want. That's way easier than SketchUp. And then I can make a copy of this thing. Copy this thing. Enter. Now, check this out. Since I've got my snaps on, when I get near to the object, it's telling me I can pick the top center or the bottom center. Let me pick the top center and put it on each corner. Is that awesome? It's so fast. And I'm going to do it over here, too. Now, what you'll see is I have tons of different objects. I've got this one. I've got this one. I've got all these separate ones here, and they all kind of light up for me. But what I might want to do is add all of these ones together. And so I can do the Add button. It's called Union. Add Objects Together. And let me add, and I'm just selecting on them. I'll add those three. Enter. And you'll see that those now are the same part these ones are still different. So how do I select those? I'm going to just do that union button again. And I'm going to highlight. And now, because I went from upper left to lower right, it's only picking everything that is all the way in the box. So this one up here and this one down here don't count. Because I went from upper left the lower right with my mouse. Click. So it selected all those. When I'm done selecting, I press Enter. And now that's all one piece. That's really cool. Now, right below the Add command is the Subtract command. And it's a little bit funky. When you do Subtract, you have to pick what you're going to keep what you're going to subtract things from. So I want to keep my big object, and then I press Enter, and then you select the things you want to subtract from it. I want to, I want to take that stuff away. Oh. I am telling you, very few programs do this as well as AutoCAD. And you can play around in here. I know some of you know more AutoCAD than others. Many of you have been in the Design 100 already. So you can figure out the Move command and the Rotate command and all this other kind of stuff if you feel like it. 
You could put fillets on edges and things. But this is all I'm asking you to do. Now, look, you can go to your layout also. And look, it all shows up kind of on a white background, which will be nice. Okay, if I want to change how they look, I would change kind of what what system I'm in. Click inside it and say, oh, I want those to be conceptual or sketchy edges. Kind of neat looking, isn't it? Makes it look like I'm artistic. When you extrude a shape, how do you get rid of the things on it? So I'm not positive. Oh, the grid. When you extrude a shape. Oh, okay. All right. So what you're doing, Lily, is you're using the extrude command. You're doing it like SketchUp where you draw a shape. And then you extrude the shape. Okay. And depending on what shape you've drawn, if you click on the edge, it only makes a part of it and makes a mesh. Okay. So then it makes a mesh. Let me see if I can do that. Oops. See that and so if I'm looking at it in wireframe it looks like that that's not really a solid and that's not what we're talking about doing I don't I don't want to do that okay and that's why I'm working with these primitives these primitives have mass to them if I look at the properties you'll see that it's a solid and when I really get into the properties of it in the Express tools I'll find that it has a mass once I put a material on it and it's got a center of gravity and all sorts of other stuff. So sometimes you'll luck out and what you drew was a polyline and it'll make a mass for you. But often you'll get this. Does that sort of look like what, what the answer to your question is? Did I answer the right question, Lily? Okay, cool. So I'm going to get rid of these and just know that I want to work with these primitives that are over here. Now, I can do it other ways, but this is the way that just absolutely makes sure that you've got it right. Okay, so, so there we go. That's what you can do. And that's how you would make those buildings and things like that. And here's where you would show it. That's there, I've got it. So now let me go back to the model. See, that was model. This is the layout. And I'm looking at the piece of paper. And that's all you need to know right now. Some of you know more than that. But now I'm going to go ahead and make a water tower. And I'm not in architectural or anything like that. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to make a new drawing. If I'm going to work in feet and inches, I have to let AutoCAD know I'm an architect. So I'm hey, Mr. Schuster. Yeah? Uh, do you have uh, office hours today for me? I do. You just need to go sign up, Jake. Yeah, I see you on there. I see you on there at 320. Yeah, can you help uh, me out? Uh, I want to know about how to... Uh, you're getting Mr. feedback because you're in here twice. Yeah, I'll help you out with that. Yes, I will. I'm going to mute you now because you're getting feedback. You're on, I think, one, you're on two computers and it's seeing you twice. So, yes, I'll be able to do that. So, now, um, let me go back where I was. But, yes, I will absolutely help you, Jake. So, I need to tell AutoCAD that I want to be an architect. And architects use architectural units. So I'm going to just type 
units. Need to get back into there. Here we go. Units. And there, there it is, units. And this little thing comes up. And so I want to check that I'm an architect. And then the foot and inches symbol will work. An inches symbol. I don't care what precision you use. We're not going to need it. So now I can type in feet and inches. So I'm going to make a cylinder. And I'm going to make, I'm going to make the radius 12. And now I'm going to use the foot symbol, 12 feet. And I'm going to make it 10 feet tall. And there it is. I double clicked my mouse wheel to see the whole thing. I was zoomed in way too far. And I'm going to look at it as hidden. There. Isn't that cool? That's a water tower if I put legs on it. So now let me show you how to put legs on it. First, I'm going to put the legs on the bottom. So let me look at the bottom. And then I'm going to put legs starting from the center. And I'll just click out here somewhere. And I'm going to put a leg there. And I'll make that leg uh, 1.5 feet in, in radius. That's pretty big. Now, there's lots of ways that I can do this. But just for practice, I can do that a whole bunch of times. I don't remember how far out I went. I don't really care. This is just a mass model. But now I can do the copy command. Copy command. Oh, you know what? I'm not even going to do that. There we go. Hold on a sec. I'm going to get rid of that thing. I forgot. I want to put a cylinder on there. So once I've got my target points, I can put a cylinder on that spot. And I can make it a diameter of 1.5. Oh, I did inches. Boy, see, that'll happen to everybody. Diameter of 1.5 feet. And I'm going to make it stretch down 25 feet. Now I got two choices. I can go copy, copy, copy. Or I can make more cylinders, whichever one you want to practice the most. Diameter, 1.5 feet. 25 feet. Oh, look at that. So I'm just making, I'm making a water tower. That's how you make the water tower. Isn't that awesome? So on my layout, there's my water tower. If I don't like my view, I can click this thing that says paper and make it model. And I can check on a different view. There, I kind of like that one. There, that's the view I'll do. And then click back. And I've got it. That's how you make the water tower. Now, to make the building i'll do it in the same thing and i'll show you another cool thing so i'm going to make my building here i think my building was a box that was i think 36 feet tab 24 feet by eight feet tall something like that that was my building and then what i did is i made some boxes to get rid of the porch. And I don't remember what they were. I'll go five feet, tab five feet by eight foot tall. And then I can just get rid of, right? I can I can copy that over to the corner. And then I can do that cool subtract thing. Subtract. I want to keep the big box. Enter. 
subtract the little box. Well, it's going to be, it's, I'm in hidden view. I want to be in wireframe. It'll be easier. Subtract the big box. Enter, subtract them. There. I've got it. Now, here's the hard part. The hard part is my, is my roof. Because wedges are a little bit funny. Wedges act odd. So, I'm going to make a, a wedge that I'm going to start in the midpoint. I'm going to go out this way and I'm going to come over this way and I'm going to bring it up. There. This is really cool what I'm going to show you. If you select it and right click something called properties, it gives you a length, a width, and a height. So I can type those in. My length should be 19 feet. My width, 24, plus 2 plus 2 is 30 feet. And I don't know what my height was. Did I say it was 8 feet? There. And now I can just move that till it kind of looks close. Or even better yet, I can move that. There's the move command. So that this point is on the middle. And that's pretty close to what I want. And I could do the whole same thing again unless you know the mirror command going the other way. But that's how you make your building. Now, let me show you one more thing on layout two. Now, all of a sudden, everything is showing up. Which is okay. You can zoom in and just take a snip. Or if you want to, you can click that model again and I can scroll with the wheel. To show just the part that I want and go back so I'm on my piece of paper so that's how I show that so I think I've just demonstrated kind of all the all the AutoCAD stuff that you sort of need that's that's how you that's how you make it and just take snips Those four primitives go here. Your building goes here. And your water tower goes here. And I think I forgot to give you the Harriet Tubman one. So I'm going to erase that. I'll put something else out. Um, briefly explain the use of asphalt shingles for roofing. There we go. And that way you can kind of, actually I'm going to do even better. Explain how mass models can predict how much energy your building will use. Anybody know the answer to that one? How can I, this, how could this simple thing right here help me figure out how much energy my building is going to use? Well, it looks like I'm going to have to show you. I'm going to go back to my VMware. And you're going to see something here called eQuest. 
And from my, and I hope it's working. I haven't tried it since they redid our computers. <laughs> and I'll click OK. I'm going to do, I'm going to make a new building. And I'm going to do a schematic by design. I'm going to do what's called a Title 24, California Title 24. That's our energy code. I'm just going to do some sort of a little building. And I'll just make it a lodging and lodging motel. I'll say that we're in Sacramento. Uh, and I'll use Carmichael. Citrus Heights, that'll be a good one. And blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. And what is my building area? Uh-oh. How big is my building? How big is my building? I could find an area, but it's 24 by 36, about 4 times 36, about 864 square feet. So I'm going to say it's almost 1,000 square feet, and it's just one story. There we go. DX, next screen, next screen. And oh, look, what shape is mine? Mine is a T shape, and X2, the X1 is 36, and X2 is 5, and X3 is 5, and Y, oh, X3 is, sorry, 26. Uh-oh, X2. X1 is that. X2 is 5. And X3 is 26. There we go. That's what it looks like. And Y1 is 24. And Y2 is 19. No, 5. Got to look at this and see. Okay. There we go. And then I can say what kind of a roof it's got. Uh, does it have, and it's got a pitched roof. There we go. And I'm just going to click on this. And I'm going to do something really cool. So this can tell from a simple mass model. And there it is. And if I look at it, kind of looks like that. That's not too bad off of what it is. And I can actually simulate my building performance and find out how much energy it's going to use. Now, I know a few of you have taken Design 300 from me, maybe. Uh, and, and if you've taken Design 300 from me, you've done this, kind of. Okay, but that's how you do a mass model. So... Uh, architecture has a lot of parts to it, but bubble diagrams and mass models and very quick estimates are pretty important. Okay? So that's why I wanted to make a mass model. So the answer to how can you get the energy out is you run a very complex energy analysis program and I'll tell you why this is, um, okay, you go, oh, well, that was pretty simple. Well, no, it wasn't. There are 36 pages, there's 41 pages of inputs that it does. But none of this has to do with the mass model uh, the, other than the size Everything else is about how are you using your space and what equipment is in there. And what's really cool is after we simulate the performance, we can see if we comply with state laws 
and can occupy our building. Now that just did, oh, it failed pre-analysis. I've got something wrong in there. Uh, range error, da, 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 under roof, space under, oh, my roof is wrong. So I've got to do some, oh, I think I've got some sort of a weird thing going on in here with my roof. Um, but not a problem. But you can actually check and see if you're allowed to occupy your building or not. Well ahead of time. So there we go. That's your answer to how mass models can predict how much energy your building will use. It's because we have fancy programs like eQuest, which allow you to make those calculations on basic volumes and uses. Cool? Okay. Well, that shows you what to put on this page and what to put on this page. On Thursday, we'll go over this page. <clears throat> Actually, maybe I should do that now so that some of you don't have to come back on Thursday if you don't want to. Does anybody have a question or should I go on to that last page? Okay, I'll go on to the last. I'm not going to save all this. Um, it's basically done for you and shown in the videos and I'd be glad to help you all out as we go. And so now I'm gonna use something called Inventor. And I think I demonstrated, did I do a video to demonstrate this yet? Have I posted it? I might have done it and not posted it yet or put it in the wrong playlist. So Inventor is another Autodesk um, product and it looks kind of similar to AutoCAD a little bit. So I'm going to start working and I'm going to do something called a new assembly. Okay, because I'm going to put two gears together. It's an assembly. Click. And it takes a little while to load. And you're just going to be amazed at this. Got to think for a little bit. So now there's lots of ways that I can make a new assembly. But look, this is kind of the same. Here's this thing again. This looks all different over here. But look, there's these tabs along the top. And there's this stuff. <clears throat> And we're going to actually design our parts as we go. Design. And look at all the types of things that I can design. And what I asked you to do is design some gears. So I'm just going to find this gear button under design. There's the gear button. Click. Oh, and I have to save it. I forgot about that. Save. Gear set one. And look, all of this stuff comes up about gears. And if you know a lot about gears, you can pick exactly the gears that you want. And I mean, look at all this information about gears <laughs> it tells you so much and i don't care you're whatever comes up you're just going to click okay i don't care and you're going to put them on the screen click and then you're going to go look at them i just made perfect gear sets i can send this to a machine shop i can 3d print it i can use it in a design and it's an actual set of real gears that you can purchase or buy and you can start working with them. I just find that so amazing. And so that 
you'll just take a snip of that and put it right here. And if you want to put it in a different orientation, right, you can kind of maybe move over to here and click it, or you can turn it so that it looks like that might fit on your drawing a little bit better. You can, you can play around with it to turn it. But that's what you're going to do. Now, here's the next cool thing that you're going to do. You're going to do the last page here. You're going to say, oh, I want those to be brass or bronze. Well, right up here, it tells you what material do you want it to be. I better save this before I go too far. What material do you want? Click. And I'll take it from the material library. Come on, click. There it goes. Got to click on that thing. Oh, there's brass. Brass, brass, bronze, bronze. Copper alloy. That might be a brass or a bronze. Oh, my gosh. Which one are you going to connect? Uh, select. Who cares? I'll do cast bronze. And load it up. Double click. Yep, that all looks okay. Why isn't that going? Come on. Oh, because I have to select the parts. <laughs> you have to select the part. I'm sorry. I thought I had. You have to select the parts and then say, what do you want it to be? Cast bronze. Oh, now it looks like cast bronze. And what's really awesome is you don't see it in here, but the, there's tons of analysis that you do based on the material. So you're just going to pick a picture of that, then select it and maybe pick aluminum. There it is as aluminum. And what was my other one? Steel. Some sort of steel. I'll do a high strength, low alloy steel. So you don't see much. You can change the appearances a little bit if you want. Like you could make it look all polishy. There it is, more satiny looking and stuff like that. Okay, but I want you to actually assign the material. So I can make it a steel. I don't know why that's not going that way. But, oh, that's cool looking too, because I selected on one of them. Okay. So that's what you're going to put on each of these. A bronze gear, a steel gear, an aluminum gear. And I want you to look up what are they used for. There we go. Tells you right there. So you can just cut and paste that in. What are... Steel gear is used for. There it is right there. What are... You may not find much for aluminum. Okay, well, they do have some aluminums. Corrosion resistance, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so there's how you answer these. Can you use different gears? Yeah. So May says that there's another way that you can do it. You can do what? Add the materials or check your gear sets. So May, what is your... You can go ahead and pop on and just say it or... 
is there's another way you can do it. <clears throat> yes, there's lots of ways in Inventor to add materials. Okay, you can, the one way you can do it, um, if you go in to select it and select its material individually, you can do that. Um, but really, you want to make sure that your material is set. And then what I usually do, tell you the truth, is leave it as generic. And then when I go to do an analysis, when I do an analysis of some sort where, there they are, when I do a stress analysis is where I usually change it. Yeah, and so you can do it from your properties too. Um, uh, you can do it from the file properties on each one. But I generally leave it, just so that you know, I use it, I usually leave it alone and then I'll assign the material for a study so that I know which ones are, uh, which ones I'm studying. So lots of cool ways to do things, but that's groovy. Okay. There we go. Any other good, I, I kind of went through the whole thing. Of course, there's no class on Friday, so it's a little bit of a shortened week. Some of you are already proficient because you've had Design 301 or Design 302 or maybe even Design uh, 300 where maybe you did some of this. But that's cool. A little extra work. Uh, getting good at something doesn't hurt. Do you have any questions about what we've got going on this week? Okay, then I'm going to call that good. I'm going to stop the recording.